On behalf of the team, I'm certainly uh, very happy to uh, present our results and give you an update on our, our lung transplant uh, program. And the status of our lung transplant program remains strong, as it has been for now over a decade, uh, going on 15 to uh, uh, 20 years. We remain among the largest, if not the largest, volume lung transplant program uh, in the United States. There are about 75 overall. We've consistently uh, uh, ranked as number one to number three in the country year to year. Outstanding outcomes and, and really, truly a program of last resort, about 20 to 25 percent of our lung transplant patients uh, are declined for lung transplantation at other centers. Indeed, we have the, uh, the highest case mis mix index uh, in the United States uh, for lung transplant programs. And fortunately, thanks to Shinya's uh, lung transplant that he finished a couple hours ago, we continue to do uh, too uh, well in, in 2025. And all of this is certainly due to the, the best people uh, in the best team. So thank you all for what you do. So we continue to get referrals really from across the country, um, internationally as well, uh, particularly from the Middle East. Uh, we get a number of patients. Um, uh, shown here is our lung transplant volume year over year. Uh, we finished 2023 first at 120, first in volume at 128 transplants. Last year we actually did 142 transplants, which was uh, second uh, in volume in the country uh, by just a slight amount, as shown here. Northwestern actually did 147. Um, uh, we did 142. You can see our other um, uh, surrounding uh, programs, Ohio State uh, uh, about a 70. So consistently out of 75 lung transplant programs, high volume, high acuity, very sick patients uh, that are declined elsewhere. And you can see here the, the excellence, I think, that we've maintained uh, over the last uh, 15 years or so. Again, thanks to, to all of you and to the teams uh, that we have here uh, at the clinic. So despite this complexity uh, and these very complex patients, very high case mix index, uh, our lung transplant mortality continues to decline. We continue to refine techniques and ways of evaluating lungs so that our patients continue to do better. Uh, a big part of this has been our EVLP program. For those of you who recall, this is a way we have of taking lungs, putting them on a, essentially a mini ECMO type device, doing things to make them better uh, and evaluating them. Uh, this has contributed significantly to our lung transplant volume uh, over the last uh, eight or so odd years that we've been doing this. And again, these are essentially uh, universally lungs that we otherwise would not be able to transplant. So marginal lungs or bad lungs that we can take, put on these devices and make them better. We also developed other sorts of strategies where we can evaluate lungs that are sort of questionable, bring them back. Uh, sometimes they undergo EVLP, sometimes we take them straight to transplant. We have a plethora of, inter of intellectual property around this and a number of techniques that have proved very advantageous that other programs now in the United States uh, have adopted as well. And I'll finish with just a, a, a tell you, telling you about a recent patient, patient we had last year, early last year, just to sort of give you a flavor of what, of what we do. So consistent with everything else you've heard this morning, this is a very complex uh, patient. This is Mr. Greg Elliott. He was a gentleman with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency for years, had, had progressive uh, respiratory insufficiency, increasing shortness of breath, oxygen requirements, and more recently, again, as a result of the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, it also developed cirrhosis, portal hypertension, ascites, and then ultimately a patorenal syndrome and ended up on dialysis. So lung failure, liver failure, kidney failure was declined by one or two programs, uh, was sent here, as you can see, quite sick. Ultimately, uh, in collaboration with our liver and kidney programs, we decided to list him for a, a lung, liver, kidney transplant. And this is him post-transplant. Um, this is the article that appeared in Consult QD. So there have only been four of these transplants performed in the United States, none for this disease. So he was the first for that. So this. Uh, uh, um, uh, got a lot of uh, attention in the national uh, media, and he subsequently has done quite well. But even more than that, and uh, I think we all recognize the human aspect of what we do. So he was, um, you know, he's a father, uh, a uh, husband, and a grandfather, and you can see here the life that uh, he's enjoying uh, after his uh, uh, triple transplant. So thank you all for what you do and the contributions uh, that you make.